Hello everyone, I am Shubham Garg and welcome back to the video lecture series of DHCH software. In the previous video, uh, we designed an inverter and get an overview of the DHCH software that is the options available, libraries, adding the symbols, saving our schematic, opening our schematic and all that. Alright, so uh, also uh, I have uh, paused the explanation, I haven't explained the inverter uh, in detail in the last video because I wanted to give you an overview. So from this video on, uh, we will be seeing everything uh, in detail that is PMOS and MOS and then we will uh, go towards the CMOS and inverter and other gates and other logic designs. Alright, and later on we will be designing symbols as well. Okay, so in this video we will be designing the PMOS and we will see how the PMOS is actually working. Alright, so now uh, if you have studied PMOS before, you must know that PMOS uh, is on when 0 is applied and PMOS is off when 1 is applied. Alright? So basically PMOS gives a strong 1 value okay, and a weak 0 value. So that is why uh, when we need logic 1 as the output we use PMOS and that's why you see in inverter there are both PMOS and NMOS for strong one and strong to get the strong one and strong zero. All right. So we will see how the PMOS actually works. And uh, when uh, the PMOS is, uh, is given input zero, it gives an output one, a strong one. But when the PMOS is given the input one, it gives the output not actually zero, not a strong zero. It is a weak zero that is indeterminate state. All right. So we will see what I mean by saying all of this. So first of all, to create a PMOS, what we need to do, uh, we need to drag and drop the PMOS and we will be visualizing the circuit. That is how a PMOS is actually working. Okay, so uh, here is the P-channel MOSFET. All right, yeah, this thing, if you remember from the previous video, we need to uh, remove IEEE from the directory. Okay, this step you have to perform every time. So just go to file and go to properties and here, here remove everything after DSCH, whether it is IEEE or system or anything. Okay, and just click OK. So here is the PMOS and just drag and drop it here. All right, so this is our PMOS and we will be supplying it input and output to see how it is actually working. All right, so I will just rotate it to the left. Okay, yeah. Alright, and for better understanding, I will show the pin names. Alright, so this is rain, this is source and uh, this one is gate. Okay, so first of all, what we need to do is we need to connect a supply towards the source and we will be getting the output towards the drain. Remember that MOSFETs are gate control device and thus we will be supplying our input from the gate. Okay, so here is our voltage supply and I will just drag and drop it here. And now I need to rotate it to left. Okay, so here it is rotated to left. Now next thing what I need to do uh, is I need to connect the input towards the gate. So here this is our button. I am just dragging it and uh, our input is now uh, we need to connect it to the gate. So this is how the input got connected to gate. Next thing uh, what I will do I need is output. So for output as we already know we need the LED. So here is our LED and I will just drag and drop it here. And I will use this wire to connect towards the LED. And now from the output to store the charge uh, we will be using a capacitance. Alright, so here just search for the capacitance. Okay, it is not available in the basic. So just go to advanced and you will see here there is a capacitance. Alright, so just uh, drag and drop it here. So now the capacitance is connected. Okay, and uh, next thing we need to connect the capacitance to ground. So here we will just drag and drop the ground and we'll connect it here. Okay. So this is how the circuit visualization of PMOS looks like. Okay, since uh, MOSFET is gate control device, input is applied at gate. 
source is given the voltage that is VDD, uh, that is the source voltage and the drain has the output that is our LED here. Alright, so now uh, as I was saying that PMOS gives a strong one value and weak zero. Okay, so when the input is, when the input applied is zero, that is when the switch is off, uh, it will, it has to give one, that is LED should glow. So let's just run the program, run our simulation and see how it is actually working. Okay, and we will see uh, what is happening when we apply zero or when we apply one. All right. So here from this green button, just click on run simulation and you will see when the button is off, LED is glowing. All right. So what is happening in the PMOS is when you supply zero, then the PMOS becomes short circuited. All right. The PMOS is short circuit. The circuit is complete and thus this voltage, the source voltage is uh, supplied towards the LED. All right. But when you uh, turn on the button, that is when you supply one, when the button is on, it becomes open circuited. Okay. So now the PMOS is open circuited and source voltage is no longer connected here. And thus it does not have a proper zero value because there is no uh, connection towards the ground. All right. As you have seen in the case of inverter that uh, in the NMOS uh, that was connected towards the ground. But here there is no proper connection towards a zero voltage value. So this is an unidentified value. All right. It is not a one, not a strong one or not a strong zero. We call it weak zero. All right. So you see when I uh, turn it off, when I off the switch, that is I am passing zero, it becomes short circuited and LED is glowing. That is strong. We are getting strong one from PMOS. But when the input is on, when the button, when we supply one, then we get a weak zero. Thus our PMOS is a strong one but weak zero device. And similarly, we will see for NMOS, which is a strong zero and weak one device. And that's why if you have ever wondered why an inverter has a PMOS and a C uh, and an NMOS, that is because one is strong one and weak zero, other is strong zero and weak one. And when we use them together, they will give both strong one and strong zero value when they work together. All right. So this is how a PMOS is working and in the next video, we will see the working of NMOS. Okay. So uh, also don't forget to save your designs whenever you are working. So for saving, first of all, remember to end the simulation. Okay. To stop simulation before saving and just go to file, save as and here I will save. You can give it any name. So I will just use this PMOS strong one week zero and this. All right. Now uh, also remember one thing, if you are new to uh, working on these kind of softwares, okay, make sure to save your names without giving any white spaces. All right. There are some so softwares out there which allow white spaces, but most of them doesn't allow white spaces. Okay. So it is always better to give an underscore instead of white space. For example, here you can see, uh, let me just use a magnifier so you can see properly. Yes. So here you can see uh, I have used underscore that is PMOS underscore strong one underscore week zero. All right. Like this, I am saving my name. So it is uh, easy to read and I'm not giving any white spaces. All right. So make sure you have this thing in practice. It will be beneficial whether you are making a schematic, doing any programming or working on any software. All right. So it will always come in handy. So this is all for this video. And from the next video, we will see uh, the same thing about NMOS. That is NMOS is a strong zero and a weak one device. And why is it so? And after that, we will continue to the, the theory of the inverter. All right. So this is all for this video, guys. See you in the next one. Thank you.